right guys, welcome back to another video. We are out here on the stream again today, another cold day. I've been fishing for a little bit here, but we'll we'll put in the fish. We're having a heck of a day, that's the little teaser. When we first got here, it was probably about 27 degrees. It's only supposed to go up to about 30, 31. Water's sorta of on the lower side, but I mean, it's, it's a nice fishable flow, way better than we had in the fall or anything. So uh, a lot of the runs are you know deep enough so that they're fishable and stuff like that. Uh, water is pretty clear, but since it's cloudy, it kind of gives this dark color to the uh, water. It just makes it look a lot darker and it's not like you can just like see everything so i think that has them feeling a little bit you know secure and has them feeding pretty good uh, we haven't caught anything below probably 12 inches maybe even 14 inches and we're just having a heck of a day out here i'll just go ahead and show you the flies here now and then uh, don't forget to like the video uh, it lets me know that you guys like these videos and want to see more nymphing just fishing commentary videos all right guys so this is the fly that we have on the bottom this is the stone fly i tied this two weeks ago on the channel so if you guys want to uh, use this pattern, uh, which you might want to after this video, just kidding. Um, but it, I mean, yeah, it is it is a good pattern and I like it because I'm not afraid to lose it basically. And then on the tag, we have the little betis that we tied back in the fall on the caddis hook. Um, haven't gotten anything on that, but I just threw that on a little bit ago. Like I said, I was running that olive hot butt paragon on the top. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and we'll get into the fishing here and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Alright, so not a half bad fish. He took the stone fly on the bottom, let him go. He came right out. There's like a soft spot right in uh, the middle of that riffle right there. And that's where he took. So, mainly just going to focus on all the soft water today. It's only supposed to get up to about 30. I think it's about 27 right now. And uh, we'll continue to see what we can get up through here. But. I think a lot of the fish today are going to come on the stone fly, but we'll see. Oh, that was, I literally casted that. All right, that fish is a little bigger than the other one. And uh, he was on the stone fly again. I literally casted it right up in there and uh, I didn't even have a chance to like Get a hold of my line and he already took, so we'll let him go here. Historically, I've always struggled with this section just because a few videos back, it's like that type of water that I, I was talking about where I used to be intimidated by it, but like, I don't know, for some reason, this water is very intimidating just because it's relatively all the same depth. So it's sort of hard to pick out where you think a fish might be laying. And if you're in that mood where you just wanna kinda of move fast, you're typically gonna fish this water a lot faster just because you, you have that feeling where you, you can't really pinpoint where they're sitting. So you feel like maybe there's just nothing in here, but I mean, they're definitely in here. I gotta slow down a little bit and work the water a little better, uh, especially here in the winter. You're definitely not gonna just pick them off easily. You're gonna to have to have it right where they are. But there are a little bit of areas up through here where there are some seams and stuff. So, I mean, we'll definitely focus on those because we can we could fish the, the area a lot more effectively because we have an idea of where the fish might be laying. But for stuff like this, um, you got your occasional boulder that creates like a, a small seam or something. But other than that, it's all just fairly, uh, you uh, uniform water so you just kind of got to cover cover it all and at some point you're gonna end up putting your fly in front of a fish but both of the fish so far i know we got the one out of that, that run down there but he was still sitting in slack water so i i mean i already had that feeling just because it's winter that they're probably going to be sitting in slack water it's pretty cold and there's no sun. Uh, I think there might be some sun a little bit later, but uh, for the most part, it's going to be pretty cloudy. So I have a feeling they'll just be sitting back in the slower water waiting for their food to come down. There's 
There's one. This is a little better one. Surprised they're jumping so much with how cold it is. All right, so that is a pretty nice little fish. Nice little spots on him. Again, on the stone fly, you guys can see that right there. That's a pretty nice fish. Uh, I'd say that one's probably around 14, 15. So we'll let her go. All right, that's three fish so far. I'm liking how this is starting. Um, but I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm sure uh, some of you guys can see there's, there is posted signs over there. Like I said, I've fished this section uh, a few times before and have historically struggled with it, but the, the side that I'm accessing from behind me is public. So I've never had any issues with anybody down here. Technically, I think the stream would be deemed navigable. So sometimes if I do see like a nice run over there, I'll, uh, I'll wade more than halfway across. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see any issues with uh, fishing all the way across in this creek. I mean, it's, it's big, it, it should be navigable. So as long as I didn't access from private property or I'm not going on anyone's private property, then there should be no issues with me fishing here. And like I said, the stoneflies, um, I mean, you're gonna get hung up a ton with the stoneflies, but it's worth it because it gets down to where the fish are and uh, it's really effective. So, I mean, a lot of times I have a feeling that when I'm using smaller nymphs, I think they're near the bottom, but they're still not in that sweet strike zone. So a lot of times that stonefly on there and it helps get your, your second fly down as well. So I don't really see anything bad about using it, but I would say from about midwinter all the way through spring, a lot of the times I have a stonefly on my point just to be able to get it down in those higher flows. In spring, the, the flows can get really high and it's hard to get your nymphs down. But if you got that heavy stonefly on the bottom, it helps out a lot with getting those flies down. There is a fish. Oh, this looks like a nice darker fish, male. And he is on the stonefly. That is that is another healthy fish. That one, oops, was about to squirm. This one, uh, I'd say he's probably about the same size as that. I think that female that we caught but he's a little more chunky you, you just feel he's a little more hefty so we'll get him back in the water well i'm liking the way today is going so far that's four fish probably only been fishing for about 20 minutes and uh, i've already exceeded what i expected for today so four nice fish and on a winter day a cold winter day so if i don't catch anything else today i will be satisfied with that if done right, I tend to like and watch a lot of fishing commentary videos. So uh, some other YouTubers that I watch would be like uh, Hardway Outdoors, Tightlining Maryland, PA Woods and Water. They have like a pretty good formula down and uh, I just enjoy watching and listening to what they have to say and just kind of relaxing on days that I'm not fishing, watching other people fish and maybe just learning something new. You can see there's a little Eddie right here we're gonna hit before I walk up there. And there's actually one right here too. And see that? That actually is probably the biggest fish of today. Right, right there, that is right in the triangle where if I was, if it was back when I was first starting out fly fishing, I would have walked right through that water. Right in that eddy behind that rock. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and release him. So yeah, that is why you gotta cover all the water, especially in the winter and especially in water like this. You just never know where they're sitting, especially in places like this where the water is just so sporadic. One of my favorite things about the stonefly too is it just, it gets down quickly. So you don't have to wait for the drift to start and you know drift five feet or so for the nymph to finally be down in the strike zone. I mean, when you get this thing in the water, I would say within 
a few seconds, it's already at the bottom. So you're fishing a lot more uh, of the water that you're fishing effectively. And when you're fishing sort of shallower water with the stonefly, um, I do have some unweighted stoneflies, but for the most part, I'll just keep the bead on and just kind of lift the rod higher to keep that bead off from snagging on the bottom. That's all you gotta do. Just lift it a little higher and you won't have to worry about the bead snagging the bottom. So far, I am liking this Shadow X rod. The only thing that I'm uh, not liking as much is, I mean, it gets fish in, um, but it has a, a real big bend to it. I, I just don't know. It makes me a little cautious when fighting the fish because uh, I don't want like the rod to snap or something, but I don't know. I mean, maybe it's, you know, it's, just, it's a pretty expensive rod, so I'm sure it's gonna handle big fish uh, fairly decent, even if you put a little bend in the rod. But I know like my four weight, 10 foot six, it's, it's a lot heavier to sort of uh, tote around and nymph all day with, but it definitely does, like when you're using that rod, you can feel the, the power that it has compared to this one with, in regards to like fighting fish. But I, I would definitely say this rod has a lot more sensitivity and you can definitely feel the strikes and what, what your fly is doing a lot better. So I would say it's probably less likely that we're gonna catch a fish up in here just because this is the faster water. Uh, but there are some pockets. Well, I spoke too soon. I was gonna say there are some pockets across the water here, so we'll see. But <clears throat> all right, so that is a fish. Another nice looking fish. And he's on the stonefly. Tell you what though, these, these hooks that I use, I just freaking love these hooks. I've been using these hooks for like three years now. They're Orient Sun 5241. Uh, the 5240s are the uh, light wire version or the normal wire. And the 5241s are heavy wire. I prefer to use the heavy wire because, I mean, when I'm out fishing, obviously, I mean, I don't know if anybody is not going for big fish, but I want to know when I hook into a big fish that the hook is not going to bend out because I've had hooks bend out in the past that were not heavy wire. So I like to use these heavy wire hooks, but they're wide gap uh, heavy wire. And I mean, these things are just, they're just so good. Very rarely do I lose fish on a nymph when I'm using these hooks. I mean, every nymph that I have is, is tied with Orient Sun uh, hooks. They aren't all the 5241s. I do have some Caddis hooks and stuff. All right, there he is. That is, I want to say that's definitely the biggest fish now. Maybe right on par with that other one, but it's pretty good fish. So let him go. I've probably only worked, I would say 50 yards, if that, and we've already caught a bunch of nice fish. But uh, like I was saying before, let me know if you guys would be interested in me talking about like what I actually use for my, my hooks and like sort of my terminal tackle. I know someone suggested before that I do like a video where I show like all my gear. So like all my rods, my reels, and kind of just explain what I use them for and stuff. Um, but if you guys, there's another fish, that's insane. Um, if you guys would be interested in something like that, let me know. We can definitely put a video together. <clears throat> all right, well, this is turning out to be a crazy day. I mean, th these fish are all good size. And <laughs> I know I say this with every fish so far, but I, I really feel like this one might be the biggest one now. We're heading in the right direction though, I will say that. Um, they keep getting bigger, I think. Oh yes. All right. Uh, just to show you guys, I did not foul hook him. He is caught. I'll show you. So you can see the stone fly in his mouth and then the uh, little paragon that got him on the adipose. But yeah, that's definitely the biggest fish. I'm actually gonna go to the shore and get a picture of him and then we'll get back, we'll get him back in. All right guys, here is that fish. We're gonna go ahead and let him go. All right, so far, pretty crazy day. 
Haven't caught a fish below 12 inches, probably. Maybe that first fish was just about 12, but I mean, so far, it's just been crazy for a winter day. Sorry if this is not the best angle with the GoPro. Uh, for some reason today, I feel like, there's a, there's a fish. I just feel like I'm not getting good angles with the GoPro for whatever reason. <clears throat> Another, this one's a little bit smaller, but this is another at least probably 14 inches. And they're getting wrapped up today. Gotta get him up here. <sighs> okay, another nice, beautiful fish on the stonefly. <clears throat> That's probably the prettiest one of today. I knew there looked like there had to be a fish there because if I was catching fish in those other spots like that, that spot looked perfect. Very small spot, but definitely could have held a fish and it did. All right, this is a big fish, I believe. This is the biggest fish of today. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. He is fighting like the biggest fish of today. Whether or not he is, He's definitely one of the bigger ones. It's a good fish. Uh, yeah, this might be the biggest one. All right, guys, there he is. Go ahead and let him go. And there he goes, on the stonefly again. And yeah, we're having a heck of a day here, so we're just gonna continue at it. We got some pretty nice eddies coming up here. Where we just got that pass fish right in behind a, a boulder right in that soft water right where you you know right where you would expect them to be sitting in the winter <clears throat> and we got a fish here in the soft water <clears throat> another good size one I'll tell you what i am going to cherish this day because I don't know when I'll have another day where I'm catching no little fish and all big fish. All right, another 14, 15 incher. Tell you what, that fly was in there good, right in the upper jaw. I had to like set everything down to actually get that out. But yeah, I mean, right in where you would expect a fish to sit in the winter, right in the slow water behind rocks. One thing I have noticed is the wind is picking up a teeny bit, which I'm not liking. It's not supposed to be too windy, but I hope it doesn't stay like that. There's another fish. Well, oh, I think this is a big one. Head shakes. I saw head shakes. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know how big yet. Don't know how big yet. Oh, no, 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 don't get down there. Come up here. Come up here. Oh yeah, that is the biggest fish of today, for sure. All right, guys, this is the fish that we got. Probably about 17 inches. He's got a nice jaw on him and some pretty colors. He's got those dark fins. But yeah, I mean, this is turning out to be definitely probably one of the best uh, big fish numbers days. Nothing over 20 inches or anything like that, but I mean, just solid, solid fish one after another. But there he goes. <clears throat> So 
So yeah, pretty insane day so far. Hopefully it just continues. Not even kidding. I was literally looking upstream and have my fly down behind me and it was like swinging through the water and this fish just slammed it. It's funny. <clears throat> I don't know if he thought it was like a, a streamer or like a, a, a hatching fly, but um, he took the stone fly. That's funny. It's actually the probably one of the better looking fish we've gotten today. Just barely had it in his mouth too, because he hit it on that swing and probably almost missed it. Probably a good 16, 17 incher. Not a bad fish at all. I was gonna say that's a first, but technically it was just basically swinging a nymph, which I've done before and everybody does. So not really something new, I guess. But uh, that's our first fish in a little while there. I'm gonna actually scooch down just a little bit and nymph this right here a little longer before I move up because I wasn't getting anything in here and I figured, you know, maybe they're just not eating in here, but apparently they are. I'm gonna try swinging it, kind of stripping it across, to see what happens. No way, no way. It's, oh my God, it's actually working. That was a pretty big fish. All right guys, that is gonna be it for today's video. Morning started out really great. We had a bunch of fish. I don't think we caught anything below 14 inches, to be honest. All fish were on the stonefly with one on the Paragon uh, flash butt, I believe. And um, it just seems that uh, the fishing basically just turned off here once the sun came out. Granted, I was fishing for about two and a half hours before the sun came out. So uh, definitely, I think maybe, you know, the combination of the sun coming out and just the fact that I was probably just in that little bite window where they were feeding. So we had like, I would say a good hour and a half, two hours of catching fish. And again, all nice ones with our biggest one being about 18 inches. But like I said, we're gonna wrap it up here. Don't forget to like the video. Let me know that you guys wanna see more nymphing videos like this. And don't forget to leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought of this video. And again, just let me know if you guys would like to see videos of me talking about, you know, what gear I have or, anything like that, any suggestions, just let me know. And until next time, peace.